Hello and welcome back to part two of the inner game of selling. Uh, for the second half, we are going to talk about the process of selling and using this approach from the book, which is customer focused and it's selling with integrity. So this is a six step process and most likely you are going through these different steps without even knowing it. Uh, but I think being aware of each step and how much time we spend in each area will help you be even more successful when you're talking with customers about our products. So let's start with the first one, approach. When we are first talking to somebody, we really want to be focused on them. We want to put them at ease, make them feel comfortable. We want them to be talking about ourselves. So imagine that you are at a booth and somebody walks by, you might point out, oh my goodness, I love that shirt. Oh, that stroller's fantastic. You can give them a little compliment, give them a reason to feel good about themselves and to bring them in. If they've already approached you in your booth, you might ask them how old their kids are. You might notice something about their situation that's happening and empathize if they look like they're having a tough time wrangling three kids around. Um, so just it's about noticing them and getting them to be talking about themselves. Demonstration. This is when we are talking about the books. And so it's really great to ask them how old their kids are, if there's anything in particular that they're looking at, and then you can show them the products. And you want to go slow. You want to pick out a book at a time to show to them. Uh, this is going to work for you on Facebook or at a booth event, at a home party, wherever it is. When you talk about the products, rather than focusing on all of the great features that we love about the books, talk about how it meets their needs. So whatever they were talking about, oh, I really want my kid to learn their colors. Look how fabulous it is for these flaps and then they can match the colors and there's all kinds of different ways for them to use this book. So make sure it's matching what they're looking for. Otherwise, we are just kind of motor mouthing about things that aren't going to make much of a difference. At this point, you're not really talking about the price. You're talking about how it's going to meet their needs. And then asking them how they feel about it. What do you think? So that you can gauge, eh, they're not really thrilled about this one. Uh, they seem really more interested in a storybook. So let me focus on picture books instead. So validation, we want to help them feel fantastic about their product, their selection, and they should because our books are amazing and have made incredible changes in families' lives. So uh, this is justify price, and most of our books are not so expensive that people have to really justify the price but you probably have heard somebody say oh i've got thousands of books i've got more books than i can deal with and so you do want to help them feel good that even though they have all those books at home that our books are utmost quality and that kids new need new books every time that they change clothing sizes they are going to need new books they may have new interests they're at a different level uh, so we just want them to feel good about what they are purchasing and talking to them about what we have heard, the stories that we have personally heard or through our customers about how this book is going to impact and meet their needs. Negotiation. Now, sometimes it we may not um, be able to just reassure them they are really concerned about it and this probably comes more in place when you were talking with a hostess or a potential recruit than when you are trying to sell a book but you know sometimes when you're trying to a grandmother is looking at a $30 book she may be concerned about the price and so talking about all of the memories that the kids gonna have with their wind up train book um, can help them and you just want to find out what their concerns are. If they're worried that they're going to lose the train and then they've just lost that $30, you can talk to them about how we can replace that. 
And so we just want to understand what people's objections are and be able to offer solutions to them, see if they have ideas of what the solutions are. And again, this works really well when we are talking to hostesses who might be worried about the size of their home or the cleanliness. And so we can maybe offer a Facebook party as another idea for them. And then the close. Um, and this is whether we they buy, whether they host, whether they decide to join or not, we are trying to get them to the point of making a decision. And if we have gone through all of these steps and we've established a relationship and we have shown them our products, um, they feel good about the product, then they have the right to say yes or no. Uh, but we do want to get them to the point where they're making a decision. And um, hopefully when we follow these steps, then we are going to have more positive results than not. Uh, sorry, this is a little bit blurry, but this is a chart of all of the different approaches. And I like this because it talks about how much time we should be having the customer talk versus us talk. So as you'll notice, that approach piece is a lot about getting them to talk. The interview for sure um, is having them talk. 